The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Must have soup. The pancake is to die for. <laughs> it was a gut bomb, but I liked it. Good. I actually fantasize in private moments about the food I had. I didn't like it. You didn't like it? <laughs> oh, okay. Dining here makes me feel rich. And what about dessert? Pecan pie, sweet potato pie. Mm. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, we have Duncan Cook, who works as a handyman and a wedding officiator. He vows that his pick is the ideal venue for a date, a meeting, or just to cheer yourself up. It's where Philo and Retsina join together to make the perfect match. And Montessori preschool teacher Patricia Munoz Garen enjoys sunshine and exotic flavors. Her place is where Asian seasonings combined with island staples and a wall of wine to release the spirit of aloha. But first, George Habit is a retired journalist who's been visiting his old time favorite spot for decades. Cocktails aren't new or trendy in this classic cocktail lounge where live music is performed five nights per week. It's on Glenwood Avenue at Lake Merced Boulevard in Daly City, and it's called Joe's of Westlake. Bruno Scatina opened Joe's of Westlake over uh, 1956 using classic old world recipes. Here at Joe's of Westlake, you get what you ask for. Our menu is vast, our recipes have not changed since opening, and our guests wouldn't have it any other way. I really love the Bruno steak. Um, it's a flat iron cut, marinated in olive oil, garlic, uh, rosemary, salt and pepper, cooked to perfection, and melts in your mouth. We have live music five nights a week. The King and Hutch show, as we like to call it, has been playing here for now over 20 years. Our customers are great whether they come in uh, to enjoy a special occasion with us for birthday parties or uh, anniversaries. Um, they are why we're in business. I've been here now for 13 years. Um, my father brought me in as a busboy. He's been here now over 20 years uh, as a server. And uh, I work my way up uh, to now to general manager. Some of our guests have been coming here for over 50 years uh, since the day we opened. And uh, they're now bringing their children and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren to our restaurant. All right, George, now this is your restaurant and you've been going for decades. Why do you love Joseph Westlake? Joseph Westlake has been established since 1956. I've been going there almost since 1956. It's one of my favorite restaurants. It's the restaurant that people keep going back and back. Uh, they have uh, a uh, boiled beef on their menu and you won't find many restaurants in the area that I know of anyway that have boiled beef and they cook it the way my grandmother used to cook it. Uh -huh. It's boiled and it's, it's, uh, and it's served with some kind of a relish Very and tender. it tastes it and, and it's just I, sometimes I feel like I'm home in my grandmother's house <laughs> when, I, when I have that uh, the boiled beef. Now D Duncan did you have um, meat, meat and more meat when you went to Joe's of Yeah <laughs> I'm a meat man myself. Um, I, I ordered the special Mm -hmm. Which you know, and they have special five nights a week, right? Special five nights a re week, and I got the uh, Swiss Italian steak. Ooh. Everything is good there. Yeah, and it was exactly what I was hoping it was going to be because I'm like Swiss Italian. Hmm, is there a weird sauce on that? Yeah, like Swiss I'm scared, <laughs> but I, I went for it, and uh, I, I didn't even use my knife. Just for kicks, you know, because I, I had the big pile of mashed potatoes on the side. Just for kicks, I ate the steak with my spoon. <laughs> wow. Just to see if it would cut with yeah, your spoon. Yeah, and it did, and yeah. it did. It was fun. Did and you have any raviolis or spaghetti with it? That's the, one of their specialties. I, ha I went with three of my favorite Epicurean friends, and we all have different tastes, so we all ordered. Uh, our one friend, uh, my one friend Ruth, ordered the raviolis and she got some kind of chicken dish with lemon and capers on it. That was the chicken king pie. of the table right because there. Because it had the chicken and then it had the raviolis, raviolis on the side. Yeah. And, uh, they have a very secret sauce on those raviolis and spaghetti. 
The chef comes in at 4 a.m. in the morning to make it. There's only three people that work at the restaurant that know the secret of that sauce, and it's really very confidential. Yeah. Now, Patricia, what did you have when you went? Ooh, okay, so I went with meat eaters because I'm a mostly vegetarian, so I was looking for something on the menu that didn't involve beef or pork or chicken. This is maybe not the most vegetarian-friendly spot. No, not at all. Um, so I ended up getting the pesto spaghetti, mm -hmm. which, you know, was great and tasty, but I felt it was a little overpriced. It was $14 for a big plate of spaghetti and pesto sauce, which I thought I could have made at home for less than $5. Not, right. as, not as good, though. Yeah, well, you know, I'll, I'll give it that. <laughs> much. The pesto sauce did have a, a really good flavor and all my friends ordered the meat meat and more meat and of course the boys loved it and <laughs> finished up what they could um, but you know my other girlfriend had um, the hamburger and she just thought it was kind of dry and only ate about half of it. I'm mm -hmm. surprised because they put some kind of onion sauce. Yeah. That's one of their specialties. Yeah, I'm going to have to say it was kind of a disappointment for most of our group, and I knew that I was going to hurt the feelings of whoever <laughs> chose oh this my. place. <laughs> maybe you need to go back with George. <laughs> maybe. Get you the, you know, and we didn't the maybe treatment. we didn't order the right things, but, you know, I no. figured with six people ordering six different items, right. you know, somebody would find something, and, you know, like you said, I went with my Epicurean friends, yeah. and they all had very strong opinions about it. And, and this is, I mean, let's talk about the atmosphere here because okay. people go for the atmosphere at Joseph Westlake. I mean, you're sitting in the bar yeah. and you're listening to a piano bar and drinking Manhattans, yeah. and it's very retro. Hutch Hutchison is at the piano, Eddie is on the drums, All right. and they're there. <laughs> And they're there, uh, they're there five nights a week. Oh, I felt like I was in a movie when I was you there. It's one of those places where you're like they fish can, tanks and everything. They can play over 2,000 songs. You just make a request of anything from 1930 to 1970, and they'll play it. And they have people that sing at the piano bar, and it's, huh. it's really quite an that, that's a It's an entertaining yeah. evening. Do you have favorite desserts, or do you have other things that you go there for? Well, I tell you, they have a flaming dessert, and the waiters bring it to your table, and the, and the, f the flames are coming up, and it makes quite a little, quite a show. And it's, right. a, it's a nice way to. Did you enjoy it when you ate it, Patricia? She said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's why. <laughs> yeah, and again, I agree. If it's a dish coming with flame, you kind of imagine the waiters are going to make a great big fire. deal and kick about it. You know, ooh, it's fire. Yeah. Um, he kind of just put it on our table. And we looked at it, we're like, whoa, it's on fire. <laughs> and, and then we didn't know, where, are we supposed to turn it out? Are we supposed to wait till it's done? <laughs> and then somebody said, well, blow it out. And we did. And when we ate it, the alcohol was just too strong. And we mm. kind of wished that maybe the waiter told us, you know, just wait till the flame dies out. Or when was right. a good time did to eat it? Did you have dessert or any other dishes <clears throat> that you? I didn't have dessert, but I have to just, you know, jump onto your tip about the service. Like, that was... One of the things that was really lacking was service. I didn't huh? find them rude or <laughs> or, but I'm surprised because most of the waiters have been there 20 and 30 years. Yeah. You, you don't have it. You don't see any young waiters walking around there. They're they're, and the they're all professionals. Is, the clientele is certainly repeat customers in most cases. Yeah. You have and a lot of groups. You mm -hmm. have a lot of families. All right, yeah. it's your restaurant. So quickly tell folks why they need to go to Joseph Westlake. Well, if you want a real treat and the real old style entrees and the old style dinner, the salads, uh, not the spinach and uh, weeds that you get from the garden <laughs> and, and other restaurants, you get, the, you get lettuce, you get tomatoes, hearty and home style cooking, that's, that's the best place for it. All right, and Duncan, what about Joseph Westlake? Um, I would try it again. I really want to go back for the spaghetti and go on a night when they have the music going because uh, it really feels like a scene there. Okay, and Patricia? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to pass. It was, you know, maybe something at the front was happening, but the food was just kind of lackluster for me. All right, if you would like to try Joe's of Westlake, it's on Glenwood Avenue at Lake Merced Boulevard in Daly City. The telephone number is 650-755-7400. It's open every day for lunch and dinner until late. Reservations are accepted for groups of five or more, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. Charming staff serve crispy wrappers surrounding flavorful fillings and keep Duncan coming back to his favorite haunt.
A casual place where the mood is light but energetic and the decor simple yet distinct. It's on College Avenue in Berkeley and it's called La Mediterranée. I'm Armin from Lebanon and uh, a lot of the recipes like the chicken Cilicia comes from my grandmother's recipe. As a child I remember going there on Sundays and I couldn't wait to get there. So I use uh, the same ingredients but I present it in a different way. Mediterranean food is uh, by nature a very sensual food. Uh, there is sunshine and lots of colors and lots of aromas and smells. And to add to that, the uh, finger food aspect uh, really makes it uh, more sensual and a lot more fun to eat that way. When we were looking for a restaurant in Berkeley, it was very important for me to have a terrace and possibly a sidewalk tables, you know, and uh, the Mediterranean uh, atmosphere just reminded me of cafes and places in Beirut and Greece and uh, all over the Mediterranean. So I feel at home. Almost 30 years and I can still keep my smile and I do it with love. But one of my wishes was anyone who walked into Lamed, any Lamed, that would walk out happier than they came in. All right, Duncan, you, you think people should be dancing to the music here? I do. At La Mediterranee or Mediterranee? You know, um, I just say La Med most of the time. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, it's always so energetic. I, I wish they had a dance floor. They probably don't have a cabaret license, which is how that kind of thing goes. But, <laughs> but you always feel the need to groove? I can do groove. some chair dancing, you know, get it going <laughs> on. Yeah, I love it. And what do you get when you're when you're there? Same thing every time for eight years. I get the three filo combo. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> yeah, we same thing for, for eight years. And and uh, a lot of my friends make fun of me because I'm always after the perfect bite. And what I'll do is I'll look at the plate, scoop up something, and you know add to where on my fork there are four flavors or more. Right. And I'll take I'll cut off a piece of the garnish they have. They've got like a little pineapple, little orange, uh, right. little banana, and I'll cut and off a, a piece of that. Cheese too. Yeah, the Munster the cheese. Oh, yes. Yeah, the combinations are. If I was a mathematician, I'd just spout it off. But there's four cakes, four garnishes, and, and then, the combination of trying to get that perfect bite is just infinitesimal. Infinitesimal. <laughs> it's it it just it just gets me going. All the flavors were absolutely amazing. Um, we saved the chicken one for last. Oh, okay, it was the, the chicken celia. Yes. With oh my the god. Cinnamon and garbanzo beans. We weren't expecting it so to be sweet. It has a little sweet, sweet character to yeah, it. Yeah, and it was almost like, is this the dessert filo pastry? Because that was absolutely shocking. And we had gotten the side with the lemon chicken soup, mm -hmm. um, and that was a flavor we hadn't ex weren't expecting, and it was absolutely absolutely remarkable. I think the flavors are sort of Greek with Armenian and Lebanese yeah. and it, it definitely a Mediterranean yeah. obviously feel to the to the food. And George, what did you have on your visit? We decided to experiment Lebanese food. We weren't too familiar with it. And uh, my date had some kind of a cold soup. Yogurt was in there mm -hmm. and I had the hot just to have a little variety. Mm -hmm. And then the waitress recommended a uh, combination salad. We did a lot mm. of different vegetables and stuff and, and right. things in there and uh, but one of the highlights was the dessert mm. uh, we oh, ordered a um, a date but they they matched the date up and they put some kind of yogurt and cream with it mm. and it was really the highlight of our meal there huh, it was right. really the delicious dessert did you get a turkish coffee with it Yes, I did have a little little that's sip nice. of that yeah, coffee. That's that, a that, that, nice. that, that's a ceremony that was, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I usually have an extra glass of Racina for dessert. <laughs> but, uh, Racina, of course, the sort of pine resin wine, yeah. white wine of Greece. <laughs> Only for some people. Yeah. Well, well it, they're they're making much better Racina nowadays, so yeah. you can certainly get great Racina. We got the Lebanese um, beer. You know, mm. I figured since mm -hmm. we're going to a restaurant such as this, ask for what they have that's local, and they said it flies off the shelves. It was right. a really hot day when we went, and the beer just complemented the weather perfectly. What about the pomegranate chicken? Because they're certainly known, one of their signatures. I just tried it like four years ago out of the <laughs> eight years I've been going there. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. You reach down to pick up this drumstick. On the way up, it falls off the bone. Oh, it's boy. so nice. And what about service? How was service for you? Terrific. Terrific. Uh, every time I, the, the water glass got a dental load, right. they came in and poured fresh water. Anything else we can do for you? I mean, no, that, that is, no, the service was first class. I mm -hmm. had to ask for directions, and they brought us a map. 
right? Yeah, and we're like, we're going somewhere else in Berkeley. How do we get there? And she's like, oh, we deliver everywhere. She brought oh, over a map, great. and they were absolutely fabulous. Yeah, I think they're actually getting better. They started out really good, but uh, they're picking it up. So this is your restaurant, Duncan. Mm -hmm. Give us a quick summary for people. Okay, it's uh, delicious flavor-mixing food. Um, treat yourself. Pick up a copy of the Magus and go read it with some Ritzina. Ooh, fantastic. All right, Patricia. I would say go and enjoy. Um, everything about the restaurant is fabulous. The waitresses are fabulous. The food is fabulous. And the atmosphere is fabulous. And George? Well, my date and I, we, we, en we enjoyed our trip there. Next time I'm there on a Sunday, I'm going to go to the Sunday brunch. It really sounded inviting. All right, if you would like to try La Mediterranea on College Avenue at Ashby and Berkeley, you can call 510-540-7773. It's open for late breakfast, lunch and dinner every day with brunch on the weekends. Reservations are accepted for parties of seven or more, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. Patricia closes her eyes to imagine the island breezes carrying the aromas of delicious inventive sauces at her pick. You won't get burned by the sun, but you will get a great view of the open kitchen. This Hawaiian cuisine can be found on Mission Street and it's called Roy's Restaurant. Here at Roy's Restaurant we bring in the freshest seafood available. We fly directly in from Hawaii, species that uh, no other restaurant in California has. Uku, snapper, uh, different types of onos. I literally have a guy on the dock in Hawaii that calls me every morning and says, we've got X amount of poundage of this, X amount of poundage of that, and then I take it from there. Seafood is 75% of what we do here. Our teppanyaki flat top is part of Roy's vision of cooking fish. It gets about six, 700 degrees, and so when we sear the fish, it instantly sears in the freshness of the fish, so it stays really nice and moist. When Roy started back in 1988, his vision was to take European techniques mixed in with Asian spices, Asian ingredients. So taking the two together, you get the best of both worlds. One of the great things about Roy's is that every single chef partner was a sous chef at one time. So I don't think many restaurants can really boast that like we can. So I started off in Tampa five years ago as a sous chef. And after a year and a half, Roy gave me an opportunity to come and partner to this restaurant here. And it's been a great five years with Roy's. Here at Roy's, we try to bring a sense of Ohana. So when you come in, you're part of our family. So uh, from the moment you walk in to the moment you leave, you'll have a big sense of aloha. All right, Patricia, have you been to Hawaii? Is, it, is this where you got started on Roy's? Because that's the original Roy's in Hawaii. I was in Maui on vacation with my boyfriend and his family, and we went there for one dinner, thought it was absolutely fabulous, and a couple of nights later, when we didn't have another place to eat, all 20 of us went back, and it was sort of a unanimous decision. And <laughs> that's, that's wow. yeah. When you went to Roy's, did you feel like you got your money's worth when you visited? Every penny. Really? I sat down, looked at the menu, I went with my good friend Jackie, and we're we're uh, looking at the menu, and I'm I'm like, okay, cocktails, appetizer, everything. I'm ready to drop two hundred bucks, mm -hmm. and the bill was one forty four. See, so you got off. It was on sale for God's sake. Yeah, days. it yeah. seriously was. I mean, I don't think I've let food linger in my mouth as long as I did at this place. It was insane. Tell us about what you had. I got the um, citrus chicken, mm -hmm. which was the best, most well-cooked chicken I've had bar none in my life. Mm -hmm. And the thing that got us was the uh, appetizer canoe. Right. Oh, you got the canoe. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I eat slow anyway, right. but, but I could take all day on that thing. Right. It was right. so good. Paddled your way to culinary heaven. I would say so, it was a festival, <laughs> a festival of, culinary joy. Yeah. <laughs> when you took a bite of that ahi tuna. Yes. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, amazing. No, huh? Where am I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just sent me back. That, that was really good. I actually fantasize in private moments about the food I had. Though. Good. I'm yeah. so glad to hear that. Yeah. You know, every bite's like a little orgasm of flavor in your mouth. And Bingo, Domingo. Right? <laughs> and you know, with that, I moved to George. <laughs> <laughs> well, when my date and I went there, it was it was crowded. It, mm -hmm. was, on, it was a Friday evening, 
and there was at least a half hour wait, so we had a little Hawaiian martini. Ooh, uh, that sounds good, with the pineapple. With on the, the pineapple, yeah. pressed oh, pineapple in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jane had the sea scallops, and uh, I had the butterfly fish, perfect. Oh, that's one of their signatures, and, the uh, butterfish. Mm -hmm. and the oh. and, uh, if I could choose my last meal on earth, oh. I've decided it's Roy's Misoyaki butter fish. It melts in your so, mouth. Oh, absolutely. You uh, I mean, you know, down. you can practically inhale it. It right. just crumbles into the fork and into your mouth and just melts like butter. It's Did you have the butter fish? I did. My my friend oh, got the three the fish butter. sampler mm -hmm. with the um yeah, so I, I got a taste of that and wow. The the service was like ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> they were really like ninjas, like a team of people. Like I got up to go right. to the restroom at one point and I had my napkin like this. And I didn't notice this, but my friend noticed when I when I went away, the guy came back and folded the napkin <laughs> and put it back. It was yeah. constantly presentable but on the down low. Right. Nobody they weren't in your face. They exactly. Were, yeah. Right. Wow. And what about the atmosphere? Is this a romantic place, George? You know, when you walk into the place it's like walking into a really a restaurant you, you think you're right in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. They have all that atmosphere all around there and uh, it, it's really nice. It's like running into another another world. Right. Or, um, it's a trip to the islands without the expense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Were you trying to impress your date? <laughs> I always try to impress her. <laughs> no. She was impressed. No, she, enjoyed, oh, yeah. she enjoyed the trip and uh, the, ex the experience. And we ended with that chocolate souffle. Well, I mean, the thing is with the chocolate souffle, I've, I've learned I cannot eat one on my own. I, I need to share it. And um, you need time to order this. You need to give them a little bit of time. You need to tell too. them. Where, mm -hmm. Before you even order your appetizer, right. you're, you're just there. I'm here yeah. for the chocolate. Mm -hmm. I'm right. here for the chocolate souffle. It needs to be on my plate at right. the end of this meal. But, you know, every time you break your fork into it, it's, you know, like the islands, it's like a volcano. Just kind of melts onto the plate. I'm definitely going then, back for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I saw people <laughs> eating it. We got the caramelized upside down pineapple. Oh, the pineapple it's cake's really good, too. But, Ooh. you know, the souffle Another is... Another fantasy? Yeah. I don't want to take you away. Oh, wait. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, speaking of the chocolate souffle, uh, my friend got the chocolate souffle martini. <gasps> we Ooh. wanted to order that one, but we just didn't have the space for it anymore. It was a three-course meal. The martini. Yeah. It's the martini. Yeah. You had the vanilla, chocolate, and then raspberry or something. And the there. bartender just he just talked it up so much while we were waiting. We were you know, we're like, we're ordering it now yeah. to come with the souffle. We just didn't have the space. Yeah. So we're going back for the martini. No, actually the scotch list was Oh my god, yeah, my boyfriend's favorite part. Right. Yeah. And their wine list is very nice, very well. Did you see the, the wall film. of wine? I did. That but I, I was feeling the hard liquor that night, but um, <laughs> I'll definitely go back and try some wines. Yeah. Did you get a load of the kitchen? The Exhibition kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, these are the future stars of, you know, the gourmet yeah. world. I mean, these guys were young and and having a good time. Right. All right, so Patricia, this is your restaurant, so you have to give us a quick summary. Well, um, you need to go. It is absolutely fabulous. You know, you're never going to go wrong with any of the fish dishes, and you're never going to go wrong with any of the meat dishes, I promise you. All right. And you, Duncan? Um, I'm actually taking the liberty of creating holidays to facilitate going here. Like, oh, wow, it's June 13th. It's Purple Day. Got to go to Roy's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And George, you enjoyed yourself. Would you go back? I would save the price of a ticket to Hawaii and make a visit to Roy's Hawaiian on Mission Street right away. All right. Yes. If you would like to try Roy's restaurant, it's on Mission at 2nd Street in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-777-0277. It's open for lunch on weekdays and every evening for dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $50. Well, I want to thank my guests on this week's show, George Habit, Duncan Cook, and Patricia munoz Guren. George chose the tradition of Joe's of Westlake, where Duncan thought that it was riding on its position as a community mainstay, although he would return to try the spaghetti. And Patricia was disappointed, but would visit the bar. La Mediterranée was Duncan's spot. George enjoyed it as authentic Lebanese cuisine with adequate portions and a professional staff. And it's now a go-to spot for Patricia. Finally, Patricia loves Roy's and it found two new fans as George enjoyed the romantic Hawaiian atmosphere and Duncan is ready to invent holidays to facilitate an evening there. 
Don't forget to check out the website for restaurant information and changes. You can also add your comments or watch all the shows online. You can read my notes on all of the wines we've been tasting today and join the KQED Wine Club. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I hope to see you then. Cheers. Cheers. Cheerio. Cheerio. Hey. Hey. <laughs> this show is available in high definition, Comcast On Demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. A KQED television production.